Well, I'm so glad you're all here. Welcome to Centering Prayer Week 2. And as I said, we're going to talk about the, the how this week. And just a little recap. Um, I really like this definition of, of Centering Prayer. Cultivating a disposition of inner silence in order to make room for God. And so there's a scripture in Ephesians. Um, and it says this, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And so I love that. I love that inner silence. And in the scripture, it says inner being. And um, if I, I like doing this. I, I look up different uh, versions of this of the same scripture and just look at the words that they use and so some of the words that they used for inner being were inner self inner man inner strength soul or inner excuse me innermost being so Paul prays this prayer for us in Ephesians and he prays it for you and he prays it for me as well and he refers to our inner being and I believe that inner being as we talked about last week gets at our true self and so um, the self that God created us to be and so how do we touch that inner being how do we get to that place I think that centering prayer really helps us to get to that inner silence and inner self. Um, making room for God and resting in his presence. Um, we achieve that silence by resting in God's presence. And what does it look like to rest in God's presence? I would challenge you and encourage you to sit and pray and ask the Lord, God, give me a picture of what it looks like to rest in your presence. What does it look like? How do I do that? Um, and I believe that he will give you a picture of what that looks like. And we know that from scripture that God is always present to us. It's we who are not present to him. We're distracted. We're busy. It's hard in this day and age to create that inner silence. And so um, I want to share a scripture with you that you're all familiar with. It's from Matthew 11, um, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I love that scripture, and I think this is Jesus talking to us. And I really believe that Jesus talking to us, saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I don't think he meant Oh, come whenever you have an extra minute. You know, come whenever. I think he meant this. I think he meant come right now. Not five minutes from now, but right now. When you're in the middle of a, your busiest day ever, he is available for you to come to him. And when we do that, we're able to rest. I believe that you can experience rest whenever you're busy, whenever there's chaos around. And I believe that doing centering prayer brings us to that place of rest and peace, even though everything around us is crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get technical on you. And I... Hi, good morning. There are two types of prayer, apophatic prayer and cataphatic prayer. Two really big words. Apophatic prayer is 
prayer that is wordless, imageless. You know, we do not put God in a box. It's prayer that's silent. In our Western culture, we're more familiar with this type of prayer, cataphatic prayer, prayer, and that uses content and words. We're used to praying using words and conversation with the Lord and having images. But God is not in a box. We need both of those types of prayer. And so... So as we think about doing centering prayer, how do we do it? And here are four guidelines. Do not worry about writing them down. There's a lot there. Um, We will give you a paper and actually a tool to use for centering prayer. There's an actual app that I'll have you download that really is helpful. Um, So um, these are the four guidelines that we use in centering prayer. We choose a sacred word as a symbol of our intention to consent to God's presence and action within. Sitting comfortably. Wait, wait, Laura, what would that look like? Number um, one, choose a sacred Yeah, I'm going to go through oh, okay. each okay. one of those. Yeah, I'm going to go through Sorry each one of that. those. No, no. Please um, feel free to, to you know, jump in. I'm kind of talking a I'm lot. I'm sorry. And, I no, no. You. If you have questions, do that. Interrupt me and, and do that, please. <clears throat> um, so we do that to consent to God's presence and action within us. And sitting comfortably with our eyes closed, we settle briefly and silently, and we introduce that sacred word as a symbol of our consent to God's presence and action within. When we're engaged with our thoughts, we return ever so gently to the sacred word. And at the end of the prayer period, we remain in silence with our eyes closed for a couple minutes. Thoughts include body sensations, feelings, images, and reflections. Yes, Paul. I'm confused about um, um, when you you pick your silent word and you're you're sitting there silently. Um, how do you how do you engage with your thoughts when you're not supposed to have any? Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Do you do you want to speak to any of that? That's the hard part about this. Do you want to speak? I think, to I think you're going to cover it, but yeah. that's a wonderful question because part of the work is to set your thoughts aside, and you'll find that your thoughts intrude upon you every couple seconds. So it becomes a practice of releasing, so that you can um, have that posture of surrender and not be distracted. Uh, we talked last time about you know the parts of the brain that are really activated in this motion, and so. Being able to focus on one object when your thoughts are trying to distract you and then to release them and to come back to just focusing on the Lord. So that's a little bit, I don't know if that answered your question, but I know Laura will go into it more. Yeah. It's a discipline. So I just wanted to um, throw those guidelines out there and then we're going to go through each one, choosing a sacred sacred word. Um, so these are just some examples of sacred words, but... Um, in essence, the sacred word is not something that is holy or special. It's special because it's special to you. So we're going to take a second, or, you know, we'll talk about this afterwards, but we're going to try to focus on what is your sacred word. You pick one just that means something special to you. Um something that you feel comfortable with um and it's the meaning that you give the word that makes it sacred we stay with the word the whole time we're praying and um as we do centering prayer over and over again we stick with that same word because it's built into our psyche and it helps us to know oh it's time for me to rest it's time for me to be silent Um, the sacred word's purpose is to, when we engage with thoughts, 
we repeat the sacred word as our intention to go back to on the centering prayer. So for instance, Ellen, you're looking at me like oh. confused. <laughs> if your sacred word is Father, here you are, you're silent, you're in centering prayer, all of a sudden you start thinking about what's for dinner. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> Father, I'm returning. I'm returning to the focus of my intention, which is to allow God to be present within me, to have his action within me. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's helpful. I wanted to know what it sounded like. Or... Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes? Are you limited to just a word? Can it be a passage of scripture? You know what? Um, Paul, I don't believe there's any like really hard and fast rules here. I actually have a phrase that I use. Okay. So, if, if that works better for you, I think that that's totally fine. So we talk about God's presence and action within, and as I said before, God is always present with us. It's we're, We are the ones who are not always present to God, right? We're distracted in our busy world. And it, the intention is to, to choose to be present to the mighty God. And we consent to allow him to act within us. And I love this. I had a conversation with, with Kanala on many months ago and she said something to me that was really, it really stuck, stuck with me, is that God's action within us is really none of our business. He gets to be God. And he gets to do what he will within us. We, our job is to surrender to that. And then be still and know that I am God. <clears throat> Centering prayer is braced based on that scripture in Psalm 46, verse 10. Very important. Can I jump in, Mark? Yes, ma'am. Um, part of the context for that statement of it's none of your business what God is doing, because at least for me, when I'm trying an approach, I'm committed to the results. So if I've sat for 20 minutes in centering prayer, I'm like, so what happened? Did, did I get results? You know, did I do the right thing? Right. Did I do this right? You know, did God do something in me? I'm looking for the results of the action because I'm very focused on goals and results. And this is relationship. And so the idea of this is none of my business what God is doing in me comes from that idea. The moment I catch myself thinking, what did I get out of that? And did I do it right? I think it's just none of my business what God is doing with it. And because it's about a loving relationship. I'm just in his presence. So I, I hope that provides a, kind of a background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't go there. But you know, um, which brings up a really, really good point. Why would we engage in this? What are the results? And as you do this type of prayer, you're not going to have results right away while you do it. However, the, the results of doing this time after time, over time, are very subtle. And for instance, your family might say, wow, you're, you're a lot calmer than you used to be. Wow, I noticed this about you. Because being in God's presence does change us, correct? Yeah. Let's move on here. So we sit comfortably and we introduce our sacred word. Sacred word. Um, as we sit comfortably, um, it allows us to, to not think about how uncomfortable our body is. Um, we close our eyes to let go of our environment. And we also close our eyes to our interior world. And so this is really important. This is where I think, this is where I get tripped up. And I'm guessing you might be, get tripped up as well here. We, um, 
we sit in silence. Um, normally the prayer is 20 minutes. There's again, no hard and fast rules. You can do 10 minutes, you can do five minutes. The point is that God sees your heart, he knows your intention, and he's really honored by the fact that you have come. So um, don't get tripped up on the time. But what happens is, is as we sit and we engage in our sacred word, we're gonna start thinking thoughts. And as those thoughts come, it's going to be your tendency to think, wow, I'm doing this wrong. Oh gosh, here comes another one. I'm doing this wrong. You are not doing it wrong. You are engaging your sacred word and focusing on, oh, I'm in God's presence. I'm letting go of these thoughts. So we return to the sacred word in order to um, focus on the intention. The intention is to allow God to be present and, and act within us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing. Um, I will give you a couple of, of examples that help me. There's a book that I read on this, on Centering Prayer. It's by uh, Cynthia Bourgeau. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying her name right. Anyways, she gives an analogy of this. Imagine that you're sitting at the bottom of a river, on sitting on a rock, and you can see the surface of the river from that point of view, and those ships coming by are your thoughts. They're coming, you let them pass. I like that analogy. And then um, there's another analogy that is, is helpful to me too by um, Father Thomas Keating, who um, has created this, this prayer. He said, imagine that you're in a busy city in an apartment building um, with the window open, and you're engaged in talking to somebody that you just absolutely love, and it's a very, very important conversation. And you hear the traffic going by, but you're so focused on your conversation. Then all of a sudden you hear a crash and your, your tendency is to want to go to the window to look, at, look out the window and see, you know, the accident and see what's happening. But because you're in a very important conversation with your loved one, you're, you're going to allow that to go and stay focused on your conversation. Does that make sense? Another helpful, helpful um, guideline or image. Thoughts. Thoughts include feelings, images, body sensations. So at the end of our prayer time, we remain in silence just for a few minutes. Some people use a timer to allow them to know, okay, my time is up. I would suggest using something that is two. I would suggest staying silent for just a few minutes to accl acclimate yourself to the environment, to come back to the present moment, to your surroundings again. And you don't want to use a timer that's going to be, you know, loud and, you know, annoying because it'll scare you. <laughs> so, um, and the time is usually 20 minutes if you need to do shorter, if you feel compelled to do longer, please do so. Any? I have a question. Is that something that you typically like try to work up to? Because I can't imagine doing that for 20 minutes. Like, do you start with less time or just go for it and just... Try to start with less time. Yeah, definitely, time. definitely start, start with less time. Start yeah. Just take the take the pressure <laughs> of I have to do this a certain way and do this for the whole time right away. Yep. Build up to it. And lastly, I just I just I'm sorry. Was there another question? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I just want to um, <laughs> talk about um, 
Sabbath rest and centering prayer and what does that all, how are they connected? Um, as we look at centering <coughs> prayer and the purpose of practicing it as bringing us to our true self, um, it's highly linked to Sabbath rest. Taking one day a week and being in rest. Um, so if Many of us, um, if we're completely honest, we would say, we would um, think to ourselves that, or tell ourselves that we struggle with, you know, we are not enough and we are not doing enough. If we're completely honest, I bet you um, many of us struggle with that. And God would absolutely say the opposite of you. He would definitely say that. And in fact, as I continue in my relationship with the God of the universe, I know for a fact that he's way more interested in who you are than what you do for him. I want you to know that that's true. Now, God is sovereign. He gets to do what he wants when he wants. He really, really doesn't need any of us to do anything for him. Does that mean that it's not important to serve him or our fellow man? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. In order for us to serve God and to serve our fellow man well, we need that Sabbath rest. We need that one day a week to just restore, to recapture who we truly are, and to be... Um, to be rejuvenated. We need that. God knows that we need that, and that's why he created the Sabbath. Now, if you went to Israel, they would talk about Sabbath. They would not say Sabbath. They would say Shabbat. Shabbat means to cease. I like that. I really like that, to cease. And to cease leads us to recover ourselves our true self. And when we do that, we're able to serve God well. We're able to serve others well. And so it's really, really important. And, and the self that knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are God's beloved. And you are God's beloved. And it's not based on what you do. It's based on who you are. What we do does, has no bearing on the fact that God loves you and you are his beloved. Now, you may spend the rest of your life working that out, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so how does this link to centering prayer? Um, many of us think that words and conversation and talking to God when we think about prayer, that, that you know, that's what we... That's how we're used to praying in this Western culture. But in fact, prayer is absolutely those things. But in fact, God's first language is silence. You can be in prayer and be in silence. We can completely trust God and, to, and we surrender so that we can allow God to be God and do with us what he, what he will without our own agenda. And as we engage in this very um, unique practice, we literally are resting and recovering our true self. In order that, we can then go out and serve him and our fellow man, and we can do it well. I'll just, um, I'll end with just a, a little bit an example of what I noticed this week, what happened to me this week. So uh, many of you know me. I, I, re I was in the middle of something, a, a busy um, uh, thing I was doing for the Harvest Moon race, and I received a call, and I got some really bad, you know, bad news. And if you know me, you know that I go from zero to... Okay, I have this bad news, and this is the worst. I go to the worst case scenario. Just who I am. 
And then I have this tendency to have anxiety and worry about situations. And it was really strange. I received this bad news and I just kind of continued on with what I was doing. Yeah, I thought about it. Yeah, it's a concern. And the next day I thought to myself, you know, this is still looming, but I'm surprisingly calm about this. And as I was in prayer a couple days ago, the Lord kind of revealed, hey, you know, this is a good example for you for centering prayer because, you know, I'm working all of that out within you. As you've been practicing this, these kinds of changes may be happening to you. So it's subtle. It's over time. Questions, concerns. Um, do you want to add? No, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Are we supposed to <clears throat> listen to try to hear God, or it's just it's nothing? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that um, the goal is to be silent, to not hear His voice, to not try and pray. Um, to not think thoughts and to allow G Jesus to hold, like if God does reveal something to you in the midst of your time with him, um, the Lord will bring it back to your recall if it's something that he needs you to know. But for the time that you're doing this, it's to let go. Yeah, I, I found that if I sense that it's... Mm, the Lord, like in that inner ear, saying something to me, I'll just kind of, with gratitude, feel that joy of His speaking, and write it down later. Like I was just like that in twenty minutes, I'm gonna write that down. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna sit in the warmth of the Lord speaking to me and me just sitting and being still, because our personality kind of taps us on the shoulder every two minutes. Mm -hmm. And if I start thinking about what God has said to me, then I'm often running on all kinds of associations and then my reactions to it yes. and my attachments to what I need to think or do or feel. Again, it's just, it's not that I forget what God said. I just enjoy being yes. spoken to mm -hmm. by God. Mm -hmm. And later I'll overthink it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really good. Really good. Yes. I'm sorry, when I first walked in um, on the screen, it, it said, if, if you stray, go back to the sacred word. So I missed what you referred to as the sacred word. Do you recommend certain scriptures to, to use? Let's go back to that. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no. And we're going to give you a handout oh. that have the guidelines. Um, I would encourage you to sit with the Lord and um, kind of, Lord, help me to, to um, focus on what's, what would be my sacred word. Hmm. It's a prayer that he loves to answer. On a daily basis? When you pick a sacred word, Ellen, I would encourage you to stick with that word. At every time you engage in centering okay, prayer, it could be it could be a phrase too. Again, no hard and fast rules. Here's a, here's another. Oh God! I just want to so, <clears throat> ask you: Would you repeat what you said about God and silent prayer? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> something in particular that yeah. you're calling? Did, did you say that, I mean, God honors silent prayer as well? Like, well yes. I said that's yes. his favorite language. That's yeah, I, it, it says it in this handout that that is his first language. Here's the thing. I, I really believe that we are so busy, so distracted. We, uh, silence is hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Did you ever notice that, you know, you'll be doing an activity and then you want the, the background noise of music or the TV on? We just, um, 
we just as a culture find it really hard to be in silence. And the other thing that's really hard is to be in the present moment. And God is in the present moment. He's not 10 miles down the road. He's here right now, right in this moment. And in the silence, we're able to engage with him on a deeper level. Does that make sense? Does that yes. answer your question? Yeah. So um, I'm a pretty busy person. And when I sit down like that and it's silent, I fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, not unusual to to, to to do this practice. So, so what? So I'm sitting and, and really consciously being silent, mm -hmm. um, repeating, returning to my sacred word. Mm -hmm. well, what am I to expect? Like, I don't mean to sound this irreverent, but like, what can be happening that I'm not falling asleep? Mm -hmm. If you fall asleep, you do. And when you wake up, make it your intention to try again. Have you done yoga? A, a little bit, but not so I maybe just stand and try to do like oh. standing and like a yoga That's pose. That's a really good idea. I mean, don't get too we too like it's something like you can Google a couple just beginning <laughs> poses that are just yeah. relaxing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to? I, I think there could be lots of reasons why you fall asleep each time. But I think that is an interesting um, comment because when we are so busy, our bodies can be in, uh, our brains are in either parasympathetic or sympathetic at any given time, which means that you're either in a state of movement, hypervigilance, responding to threats in the environment or you're in a state of rest. And our bodies have to go to a state of rest. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how to recover often. We don't know how to shift from that constant movement, constant busyness, fueled oftentimes by anxiety and difficulty, and to really rest. And so your body might be saying, this is the time I can recover. This is the time I can go into Sabbath. And it looks like sleep. But I think, as Laura was pointing out, there could be, you know, um, both of you said important things. As Laura pointed out, it could be okay to just allow. Allow that I fell asleep and I wake up and I try again. And maybe I try again with a pose because I think that was a wonderful suggestion to like keep the body in a state of receiving and receptivity. Did that make sense to that? Answer? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. What you find out um, in Centering Prayer is you discover a lot about yourself. Your body starts to speak to you asleep you're exhausted now you have time to pay attention to that part of you that maybe you keep to the side because you've got to do all the things that tells you a lot of information about how you operate Very when your personality taps you on the shoulder every two minutes when your thoughts come in it tells you a lot about what you're driven by Sorry, what were you gonna say? yeah just important information to notice and pay attention I notice and pay attention to the fact that when I sit in silence I fall asleep really important information and here's the other thing this is not my quote i think it's by the a guy by the name of david bennett and i love what he says it says to know yourself is to know god and to know god is to know yourself two really important it's something to ponder yes say something um I'm really familiar with this. I was a, I am a yoga instructor for over 30 some years and I've studied intensively. Um, so my advice is, is first of all, um, when you sometimes get distracted or get exhausted, you feel like you're ready to fall asleep, watch your breath. Imagine feeling your inhalation coming up through the body and your exhalation going down the body. The exhalation is kind of your parasympathetic, parasympathetic connection, which helps you to let go. When you're um, growing up, you naturally, and children do it as well, they sigh. Yes. They let out the breath. So imagine that you're breathing in, watch it. Don't think about it, just watch it. And then breathe out and imagine you, whatever thoughts, whatever feelings, you're letting that go. 
um, don't have expectations about anything. Just be there and trust God. And I think that's the key. You're surrendering everything to that quiet peace and not expecting anything from it. You're just trusting in the fact that you are clear and you're calm and you're his. I love that. And um, is setting a timer is a good good thing because when you are sitting there without a timer, you're thinking, how long has it been? And, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems like forever. <laughs> and that's another thing. You can just literally sit there and wait. And just, again, watch the breath. Watch the breath. Let it come in. Listen to it. Listen to it go out and let that be your, your feeling. I think not only thoughts try to intrude, but your body does as well. So you'll be like, I have to itch my nose, yeah. I have to move yeah. my shoulders. <laughs> try to like breathe through that and not bring attention to it or not react to it. And it's interesting how it then like gives up and goes away. Um, yeah. So helpful. Thank you so much. So helpful. Yes. Um, I, I would add to that to um, associate your sacred word with the inhalation and exhalation. Yeah. So that instead yeah. of focusing so much on your breath, you're, you're focusing on your sacred word yeah. as you breathe in and out. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you have Alexa in the house, you can ask her to wake you up in 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good with point. With Christian music okay. or, or uh, hymns or something like that. I want to give you another um, really helpful piece of information. There is an application that you can get on your phone in your app store. Just type in, in the search engine, Centering Prayer, and um, ah, my phone's over there recording me. Um, <laughs> there's an application. Um, it starts out, it, it, it gives you the four guidelines. It, it asks you um, for a, a beginning prayer, you get to pick it gives you choices of scripture, psalms, different prayers. You get to pick the prayer. It will. It gives you um, the option to pick a, a, a sound as you start the prayer. Um, there's a, a number of different sounds, like rainfall or on um, you know piano music, and then it, it allows you to pick the time praying that you would like to do five or ten minutes on um, it it allows you to pick this the um, sound that you would like as the prayer ends and it'll it'll alert you to the fact that it's time and then um, there's a closing prayer really helpful app I use it all the time Ted did you find it is by it chance? called Centering Prayer Contemplative Outreach yes yeah. yes I just searched Centering Prayer on the app store yes okay. is it orange and yeah it has yeah. green blue orange red if you're not uh, a tech person I'll hand these out for you if you are on video please email me if you'd like a copy of this is this something you do daily? Um, you know, the recommendation, and this is hard, but the recommendation is twice a day for 20 minutes. That's a lot. I've never been able to achieve that, just, like, just being honest. 20 minutes, I've just got for 20 minutes, and I've been kind of doing this for about two years. So... Um, give yourself <laughs> yeah. give yourself a break. This is not um, could you take one and just pass? This is not something that is um, here's the thing. If you are distracted, if you have thoughts and you're annoyed at yourself and you're like, dang it, I have a thought again, I'm not doing this right, your annoyance is gonna take you away from being at having that inner silence. So this is um, just have grace with yourself. Okay. In, in that practicality idea, do you try to do it at the same time every day? Or? We usually do. Yeah. And do you do it as part of a, like Bible reading and other stuff too, or keep that all to itself? Um, you know, 
Well, for me, this is just for me, and, and you need to do what works for you. But for me, when I do this, it's usually in the morning because I'm a morning person. And it's usually after I've done my regular devotion time. Okay. That's just me. Thank you so much for, thank you. Thank you. for um, being here and giving us your morning. And um, what we're going to do is have you practice this during the week. And then next week, we'll just kind of debrief and, and see how it went. Does that sound good? If you have questions, please call me or email me. Yes, Barb.